All right, welcome. It's 8.30, welcome to the uh, November 15th meeting of the Board of Franklin County Commissioners. Commissioner Sotomayor? Present. Commissioner Harris? Present. Chair Dickinson? Present. Commissioner Dunn? Present. Vice Chair Wehmeyer? Present. All right, please rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance followed by the invocation led by Pastor Scott Dickinson. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for Good morning, Commissioners. Father, we thank you this morning for uh, all you do for us. Um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm a little bit hesitant to thank you for the early darkness, but uh, it brings some beautiful sunsets, so we're thankful for that. I'm grateful for the community we live in as I've watched farmers getting their crops in and um, that beautiful haze that comes with that, uh, just getting work done, and I'm thankful for it. They feed us and they uh, supply us so many things, so we're grateful for that. We thank you for our, our, the place that we live. This is a great, great place to live, great place to work and we're grateful for it. Lord, I want to continue to pray that our commission makes good decisions, that they, they're wise in their decisions, and that they are, uh, um, show no favoritism, and that they just do their thing as they're supposed to. We thank you for the citizens of Franklin County recently having rem remembered our, uh, those who have fought for us, and uh, uh, we're thankful for those who have, who have done that, some here on, on, our, on our commission. And, uh, Lord, we just are grateful to live in a free country where we can do as we want and uh, and have those freedoms, and we're grateful for it. Just be with the commission today. Be with the county. Watch over those folks that are hurting today. And, uh, Lord, we just thank you for all you do for us. In Christ's name, amen. Do we have any correspondence organization today? I don't believe so. We don't have any general public comment, so our consent agenda today consists of the minutes from the meeting on November 8th, um, the Franklin County Harvest to Home Memorandum of Understanding, um, the Franklin County Health Department Revenue and Write-Off Analysis for January 1st through June 30th of 2023, um, that debt write-off in the amount of $2,510.77, an insurance write-off in the amount of $22,483. Motion to approve. Second. Commissioner Sotomayor? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Commissioner Waymeyer? Yes. Chair Dickinson? Yes. Our only item of business today is to consider holding a public hearing on November, or today, to consider vacating the north 1,700 feet of Louisiana Terrace in Section 3, Township 16 South, Range 19 East of the 6th Principal Meridian in Franklin County. Um, David Lee is not here. Yep. Okay. Um, happy to discuss this. Um, we've discussed this briefly at prior meetings. Uh, Public Works received this request. Um, and talking with David, talking with Jeff, basically three options here, can vacate the road, can put gates up, or we can work to make the road passable. Um, what we want to do today and what I presume a lot of these folks are here for is to discuss their thoughts on this. So my recommendation would be to go ahead and seek a motion to open up a public hearing, um, let these folks come up and, and give their thoughts then we'll close it down and have board discussion and proceed from there. All right, so then I need a motion to uh, open a public hearing. Before we do that, the, there you say there are three options. Just thinking if we're bringing people able to get their thoughts, make it clear what the three options are, maybe we can get a little more detail. Well, we can vacate the road and literally not have close anything right to do with it. We can put gates up on the road, mm -hmm. as we've discussed, or we can make the road passable which jeff is here to discuss what that and he's got pictures they mowed it back a little bit just to discuss what that would look like okay yep. i have a motion to open the public hearing Second. all in favor all right all right i guess do we need parameters or are we as far as time um 
Well, I mean, just come up and tell us. If you, when you do come up, would you give, please give your uh, name and address? Um, and unless it gets out of hand, we'll let you discuss. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We have a couple people that signed up, but it's a public hearing, so we don't really need people to sign up. Oh, so, so. then you just come up. So then, so well, then if you want to name and address. Yeah. Still. Yeah, we need yeah. their name and address. So if you want to come up, just. To, yeah, Okay, so do you want to come up and talk? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, my name's Steve Bailey. Uh, address is 4213 Louisiana Terrace. My wife's with me. We're one of the three property owners through the path or the old road it's next to. Um, the petition was to vacate because that was our understanding. My understanding there's a proposal for the, the fence or the gates to, I think, will address most of the problems that we're having. So if you've seen pictures, that section is at my end, like four to six feet below grade. At the north end, um, Allen's property, it's probably over six feet. So there are several problems we had. The first is people getting stuck. I, I almost it's just stupid. The first few years, we've been there about five years. We've been in Franklin County for 20. Um, they just followed their GPS map, and literally there was a sign from um, the tow company because they would make it down with the first 10 or 15 feet and then have to be drugged back up. If they make it past that, um, Andy Drecker literally has a small bulldozer they come out to drag them back up because they can't get a, a truck or a tow truck through there when it's wet. So in the first few years I was there, we've had at least half a dozen Amazon drivers big vehicles stuck because they followed their GPS. I spent over a year, year and a half sending messages to Google with pictures to finally get them to take it off of the map so people quit following it. So that helped with that. The other big one is the county, Franklin County put a barricade at the north end. So that prevented a lot of just the silly part of that getting stuck in the problems. The next problem we've had is people who are just looking to mess around. So because of the grade, and because it's so far down, when it's a storm, it's just wet and muddy. In the spring, when it's nonstop, that turns into a stream. Because from my end, it's downgrade all the way clear down to the south end of my property where there's actually a ditch and a culvert. So it flows so bad and it's so far below grade that it's literally, I mean, I've had to repair the gravel a number of times, at least two times it's washed the road so bad that my wife couldn't leave our property with her car. We've had to go get a truck. So at one point, I've added a ditch and put a berm just because the erosion was so bad. I've hauled every year about a ton of gravel down that washes down to try to rebuild and, and fix that. So when that happens, it's impossible for months. The, the problem is, is the drunks and the sillies that want to come up and play. I've pulled people out with my Jeep during the day. When you have someone banging on your door at, after midnight saying, do you have a tractor to pull this out? And because of the problems we've had with people coming up on the property, I've got no trespassing, I've got gates, I've got cameras, there's an alarm on the door. So at midnight when your families woke up to the squawking alarm and there's someone inebriated, you kind of get your fill of this. It's not as amusing. Uh, the last big problem we've had is in the last three to four months, there's been a new individual, because I've had people, because I put up cameras and trying to deal with the, the issue is a uh, and I've had people around the property I don't know what they're doing I found footprints on my shop door what looked like someone tried to kick and break in unfortunately there's not a window and it's steel and they didn't have a crowbar or something but because of that we're kind of hyper vigilant we uh, we moved from over closer to Pomona my business has been broken and vandalized my wife's car was stolen when we lived north of town which is about 10 miles west while my kids were home, somebody literally banged on the door and because they didn't answer, they went and broke into our vehicles till they found one they could steal with a pair of vice grips. So because of these experiences with my wife and the family and these things that were kind of extra vigilant or hyper about this. So a few months ago at 1130 at night on a Sunday evening, my camera caught someone going up, which it happens regularly. Somebody, if it's muddy, they're going to goof but the dogs wouldn't stop. 
So I went out to see what the dogs were barking, and halfway up that roughest section, the gentleman's parked about 30 feet from my shop, because that's how close it is to the path. And he's trying to quiet the dogs. So I confronted him. It wasn't pleasant. Basically, at that point, I went back in, locked the doors, called the police. They come out. The problem is, is they're like, if you're not catching them in your property, and it's not vacated, it's not closed off, it's not, you know, owner use only, then there's nothing we can do. And I, in that conversation, told him, we have cameras, I, you're not going to sneak up here to my shop. I know when you come by the gate. So then over the next month, he proceeded to tear the barricade down at the north end and come down. Same guy. Same guy. Um, the neighbor to the north, the property owner, called the police on him, put the barricade back up, tore it down again, had a confrontation, same thing. The last incident, I was out of the state, my wife was gone in business, and my son was home alone, and I see him, same vehicle, it's a recognizable truck, please say we know who it is. My son's home alone, so I call him saying, do not confront him, I don't need this, I don't want it escalating. Call the police, same thing, they come out, verify. Their response is that we can't, this is public access, even though he's obviously up to no good, we, unless we catch him on your property or breaking into that at that time. So that's one of the things we're hoping to solve with this. Um, my understanding is one of the proposals is the, not just vacating, but putting up gates so that it, it basically keeps that utility access open, but keeps people who are up to no good from being through there and the drunks and goofballs from being through there, which seems like that solves most of our problems. Because now there's no access from the north end, no one's sneaking in, nobody's messing with, because the three property owners that you know, are adjacent to this have all signed this petition, because this is an ongoing problem for everybody. The, uh, the My understanding is it's never gonna be a finished road. From my understanding, whoever petitions, which none of the property owners do, if someone else shows a need, they have to actually pay for it, which it's so below grade, it's, I can't imagine what the cost would bring that clear from the north. So it's never going to be paid for. The, uh, the, the final part of that is it also, the proposal that I understand it with the gates and the lock and having property owners or people verifying a need, meaning anyone to the south who thinks they need an egress or be able to go through there can have that. That key will still give them that. Nothing will change, but it will keep. And it's, my understanding is there'll be a notice saying you don't have a right if you don't have permission to be past this point. Meaning, like this gentleman that we're, the re most recent problem, the police will be able to actually do something when they confront him. Yeah. So I'm hoping it fix all of those things. The only thing I would add, uh, um, besides the, the fence, it would probably be put a dead end or a sign at the very end of the road, because the other problem, while it's not a problem, um, anyone that comes down there, there's no way to turn around. We've, we've got where we keep our gate closed and locked, because we've had people come clear up to the house, come by it, they seem either confused. I come home one day and there was someone with a trailer, fairly jackknife, because they couldn't back up the road. So I had to go move vehicles to let them turn around in my property. Um, on my camera, I catch it every now and then someone will come down with a trailer and there's no way to turn around. You have to back up to, you know, someone to the south property in order to get turned around. So a sign would be about the only thing I would add. And other than that, I just want to say I appreciate taking this serious and, and having a, a, a good solution to address, I think, everybody's concern. So that's what I wanted to share. Did, did you have any questions for me as a property owner? You just mentioned you talked about upgrading the road. The most likely way is, yeah, if somebody wanted to build a house in that quarter mile section, they would have to pay to upgrade it. There are, I guess, we could, as a commission, upgrade it, but like you said, it would be a considerable expense. The county has 1,100 miles of road. There would be a lot of resources for there. That one, especially, you know, how much work would be, and then really we'd probably to do it right need to acquire some it's only, I think, 50 foot, which is pretty pretty small easement. It's not likely we would put that much money to upgrade it when it's functional. Yeah, property. so my understanding in reading it, so, so the three people who own the property all along there have signed the petition, uh, the uh, Cobbs, the Hutchinsons, the Baileys. 
the way I read it is anyone who wanted to change that status and showed a cause, which obviously the property owners don't want, would have to pay, I think it's up to 1,000 tons in the maintenance yeah, for the they first could year. Also, yeah, but yeah. I mean, we could also, if we had, say we, there was a lot of traffic that needed to go north and south. Yeah, so this is, this is pre-existing. Yeah. My neighbor in the north has been there for 40 years. That's, like my shop's literally 30 feet from that path. I mean, there's, I, I can't, from the very north end of my property, it starts cutting down. Like it's like, say it's four to six foot below grade. There's a lot of reasons it's not a good candidate. Yeah, that's, so I, I, that's why I say I don't see financially that's ever going to be finished. This problem's not going away unless we yeah. address it. And I think the proposed gates and signage and locks seem to deal with all of the concerns from us and anyone else. So that's why I, I, I said I, I appreciate you putting the thought and and actually you know, having a solution, I think will will benefit everybody. So that's so what I'm in favor of the uh, gates. The gates, fine. Yeah, the vacate was fine. That was our understanding was what we needed to sign. The gates with the keeping the right of way and easement. I say that seems to address that issue because there is a power line that runs down the. Well, it's actually on the co the neighbor across the road's property. Um, of course, I'd keep vehicles that aren't you know don't have a key and all that. You know, if they're, they're not they're utility, if they're not property public, owners. I guess right away. So I guess if it you keeps have right a double header who just is harassing well, you or whatever, and I got you know, I'm not you don't own that land now, so no, we don't own it. We're not responsible. But my understanding is the signage would say if you don't have permission, and there's keys given to people with permission, then you don't have a legal right to be there. Meaning, when somebody's down there that doesn't belong there, and I call the police instead of escalating this or having an incident or causing more problems with the family. They can actually do something, because even the night when my son was home alone, they're like, you know, we get his information. If anything happens, call us. But you know, same thing. If you don't have evidence, we can't do anything directly, and this would give them the legal ability to deal with that. I think it would probably eliminate the problem almost altogether, because no one would be able to to get clear from the north through the neighbor's property, or get past my driveway in order to get access to. I mean, I've got a lifetime worth of tools. I work on my own for my business, it's like I, I couldn't afford to have someone break in or steal, which has happened at our other residents. It's happened to our neighbors. You can't afford to. It, just can't afford the tool, it. Tools either. Well, and there's an emotional. Besides, I'm the one that has the confrontations and trying to find a solution so this doesn't escalate. My family has to deal with this. <coughs> my children. And you don't know who's going to be carrying a gun or not. Carrying. Well, yeah. if they're just screwing around in the mud, it's just yeah. inconvenient. If they're up to no good, when someone's on my property snooping around and trying to kick my shop door, I mean, they're, they're not up to any good. Well, and then one of our questions is, so if you if we did vacate it, then the property owners could put a gate up. Um, or if we don't vacate it, then we, so it's whether, are we interested in owning a gate and maintaining a gate? Um, or if we vacate it, let you all do the gate. So I think that's going to work. I'm fine with either. Yeah. So it just, it, again, it would mean... It would be a legal recourse with the county doing it. Then you still have the, yeah. you know, the easement. But right. you know, but yeah, it, either one's a solution for us. So, thank you. All right. All right. Thank you. All right. Anybody else would like to speak on this? Yeah. Please, come on up. We lived out there for. Oh, name and address, please. For the clerk, I got it. Vinny Page, forty-two ten Louisiana Terrace. We've lived out there for twenty some years. And no, that road's not a problem. And yes, it needs to stay open because everybody that gets electricity on that road, all the power comes in from the north. They're out there now clearing the trees and, and cleaning up. It looks, looks like it did, you know, 20 years ago. They used to grade that road all the way out to the end and back maybe a couple of times a year. And, you know, we never had any problems with that. And we've never had any problems. I mean, people used to go down there and play in the mud, but that was only when, you know, I mean, it is a fair weather road on that end. And they could make that signs a little bit more visible for that, enter at your own risk and all that. And it would be nice if there was just a little bit more of a pad on the north end, but it wouldn't take much. You don't have to make this the interstate, you know. It wouldn't take much just to 
put a little bit more dirt there, make a little bit more pad to go in and out of there, and even gravel it all the way through. That would be fine. But that road needs to be open so they have the power company has access to their poles. So if I've we, been worried about that for five or six years. So if we didn't vacate the road. I would not vacate that yeah, road. Yeah, I've got that. Um, there's no reason like to. Yeah. Hold on. If we put up gates, county-owned gates, we would, the county would still own or have Well, to that would be that. But see, for the last eight years, they haven't touched that out there. Yeah. And they've just let it grow up. And, and uh, you know, it was in bad shape. And if we would like those storms we had, 90 mile an hour winds, luckily the electric poles didn't break over. Those poles hadn't been looked at in 20 years. So going forward, we're here to discuss a, a way going forward. Well, that's why that road needs to be there. Okay. And another way out. I don't think if something the... happens on the south end and you can't go out the south end, it'd be nice to go out the north end. We didn't go out there to live on a dead end road. That road needs to go through. Would you be open to an option where the county, we kept the right of way. We still open the right yeah, of way. We own that, but we put gates at either well, end to it, keep people from. Well, they could do that. They, need to, they could do that, but the, it would be better to have it where you could actually go out the north end if you needed to. Because okay, if a I'm tree get, falls on the other side and you can't go south, you can't get around it, and there's a high pressure gas line that runs across that road, <clears throat> you guys probably don't ever remember. Remember that one that on New Year's Eve out by uh, 33 Highway and 68? Benny? <laughs> It burned for how long? <laughs> I'm related to Benny, so I. Yeah. Gonna be, let me finish. Okay, go ahead. One of the options we're looking at is where the county keeps. We own the road still. That's right. But you could, because you have property on that road, anybody who needs a key, in the event that uh, a tree falls down or you have a piece of. Equipment you don't want to turn around the middle of the road. Yeah, you could open the gates yeah, and keep that's going. That's right, but you'd have to maintain it. And see, and that's what I'm talking about. They hadn't done anything out there for eight years well, of maintain the county of maintaining that road of way in and out. If they wouldn't, I mean, they would have to keep it so you could get in and out, whether there's a gate on the other end or not. If the trees are all grown over it and the ruts are all in there, you couldn't get out of it anyway. Well, we, and that's the way it's been for the last eight years. Okay, well, going forward. And it used to not be like that. We're here to, 10 right. years ago, we got a picture of that road with us from 20 years ago, and you could stand at our driveway, before I put our driveway, you could see the power line, and you could see the road. road. I've worked down that road, I've pulled yeah. this next but we've road. Got I that. understand what you're saying. We're but it's looking a lot future. better right now. Okay. The road itself. But I still think we need a way out to the north, definitely. And we haven't had that much problem with people coming down that road. How close do you live to it? Huh? How close do you live to it? To what? I mean, do you live right on the... the yeah, I you know? live right on Louisiana Terrace, 42 yeah, but, on the t but do you live on the, the that low-maintenance part? No, nobody lives on the no-maintenance part. The no-maintenance part actually starts right after Bailey's driveway. And the reason... So that their, they but their property is, is abutted to the... Ours runs along the side of it, and so does his. But he doesn't live where the, but the problem was like on his driveway where he said nobody could turn around because he dug a ditch across the road. And when you pulled in his driveway, you couldn't back around to back your truck out to the north and then go back south. So if somebody got stuck so in the you can't your dig it. So you can't dig a ditch across the county road, can you? Or should I dig one? <laughs> no, you can't. But that's the whole deal. All we got to do is Bailey needs to put a culvert underneath his driveway and, and then just let the water run down the ditch right there. And you don't have to worry about digging a ditch across the road. There are all things we can work on. But, right. there's no re but there was no reason for a big ditch across that road anyway. Because okay. the, the water can be taken care of without a problem okay. by putting a culvert. Well, 
Uh, all right, hey, 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 that's hey, right. right, right. You put a culvert underneath your road and run the ditch, just like everybody else in the Bill. county has a culvert underneath their driveway for the water. He wants to dig a ditch across the road. That's not what we're talking about right now. We're talking about vacating. That is, but, but that is what we're talking about. Okay. Any questions for Benny? Any more questions? No, we understand where he stands. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Benny. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Now come on up. Hi, I'm Dan Cobb, 2364 Shawnee Road. Uh, the impassable road runs a whole distance of my property. And there have been times where, for instance, this last spring, my son was out mushroom hunting. And he finds a gut pile and deer hair where someone had come back there and poached a deer. So that's another problem with people coming back down that road. It's not traveled enough that, you know, people aren't afraid to just go down there and park, and then they just go out on my property. And um, as far as... Uh, not vacating the road. There's no reason to to not vacate the road. As, as long as we have gates on both ends, vacate the road, give the property owners keys, and let the property owners and the electric company have access. So that's my two cents. Well, I think you're maybe talking about two separate things. For us to vacate the road, we relinquish any ownership at all. And the gate, everything is on you and the other owners. That's fine. But for us to just gate it, then you all would have keys. We would still be responsible for the gate. We would be responsible for granting access. Would you be okay I with would that? Be cool with that, and that would uh, that would solve Benny's issue too. Right, it would. And yes. And well, and that, and and what that also does is every once in a while we would go in there and clean out those trees. You know, because otherwise, if we could vacate it completely, then you would be in charge of that also. All right. Yeah, my, my preference would be the two main roads and the All right. Hi, folks. My name is Alan Hutchison. I live at 2394 Shawnee Road. I'm on north of the Baileys. Uh, I'd like to reach out to Mr. Lee when I first contacted him about this last summer. He responded and was really helpful and you know, kind of got this ball rolling. Uh, I have lived out there since uh, March of 1984. And over the years, we've had a few problems with people like we've had this last summer, but you know, it doesn't happen all the time, but often enough that it's kind of a problem. I've had stuff stolen. I've, this past summer, the guy Mr. Bailey was referring to actually stopped right outside my property. There was a tree limb that had fell across there and he didn't want to drive his pickup over it. And he was out there on a Friday evening chucking the tree limbs over on my freshly mowed grass. And I asked him not to do that and he flipped me off and went on down the road. And he's been kind of a problem and it's not something that happens all the time Every one or two, three years, or somebody comes along, it's kind of a problem. And it really was kind of coming to a head this year. Uh, me and my wife are highly in favor of the option of closing the road down with the county being owned and gates being on it and people having access to it that need access to it. I think that's the best option for the neighbors that are concerned about the power lines and the power company having access, emergency services, and that sort of thing. And one final thing, you know, everybody's talking about expenses and stuff of upgrading the road and stuff, where Louisiana, Louisiana Terrace adjoins Shawnee Road there to really sharp incline. That's gonna take a considerable amount a little bit more, I think, than a lot of people realize, to kind of straighten it up to make it safe for somebody to pull up there without having to get up on the road. And people really fly down that road. And it's, there's a little bit of a safety issue right now, the way things are. With, I'm surprised people haven't had a problem there before. So that's our concern. If you have any questions for me, I'd happy. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone 
Okay, we've got one more. Sounds like two more. Okay. Name? I'm Mary Page of Park Can't Go By Kathy. And, uh, and I just, I wrote it down because I can't yeah, think fine. always. Awesome. But so we appreciate the county for the road work they do for us. And, and I know Mr. Um, um, I second, Jeff had replaced the, the culvert wood bridge on the south end of, Frank, of, the, of Louisiana Terrace some years ago, and we really appreciated that, going from wood to, to so now it's not flooding out. And uh, so we do appreciate the county work on what they do for our roads. We have uh, lived on Louisiana Terrace. Benny and I built the house 23 years ago, and for the first 15 years, as he brought out, it was totally graded at least twice a year, I mean, the fair weather part. And we were able to drive our pickup down the entire road to Shawnee during the dry weather. And the road has not been totally graded since Mr. Lee uh, took over the department six or more years ago. We have talked to Mr. Lee about this problem more than once. And we've also talked with Bailey's about how the trench he dug across the road because it does affect us. And so we feel this road is vital to keep open and, and the reason why there are six houses on this road. At the south end, for some reason, whether it's an accident or a tree falls over the road or something happens, um, we can't get out. We're stuck. And so an emergency's happened, and they could be a medical emergency or vehicle a a accidents. And, and we also keep in mind we have a very old high-pressure gas oil line. I know they maintain it, but it's old and it's running east and west across Louisiana Terrace, midway down our road. Also, our utility lines come in from Shawnee Road, and we need that, the Evergy needs those access. And, um, and of course, they have access with their heavy trucks, and so for the heavy trucks, they need gravel on that road. And, um, and we appreciate the fact uh, the county uh, trimmed the trees just this last week, now we can see down the road. We do appreciate that. But the trench really is still kind of there. Um, so I'm not sure if, if, if they could really drive across that. Um, and that trench that Mr. Bailey has dug across Louisiana Terrace does come down to our, it comes to the south on our side of the road. And it has filled up the culvert that goes under the road that causes the water on our creek to back up. And uh, we have pictures of our, which I don't know if Mr. Lee took a picture of, but we took a picture of our fence line, which is now about this far up off the dirt from all the dirt he has put on our side of the road. And so that is a, presents a problem for us because that water is not running off when it rains, whenever, whenever we get rain, and so it's backing up. And so, um, and we understand he doesn't have a culvert. We have a culvert, the county made us put a culvert in when we built the house. For some reason, the county didn't, or he didn't, whoever built his house did not put a culvert in. And so it, uh, it, that is a, a problem. And we also have a driveway problem. He mentioned that, that his delivery services, when they go to deliver Amazon, his garbage trucks, People who have trailers delivering his cars to his house or whatever, many times have to back down. And where do they back down to? Our driveway. And so they're turning around in our driveway, which creates a lot of ruts. Uh, we've had grass damage from it. Um, and then also, uh, you know, he's, he's a father of teenagers, and we love teenagers, don't mind you. But they drive fast on that road, too, right past our house, so that's seems to be a problem we have to watch that out but anyway to keep in mind uh, the fair weather part of the road for the past six or more years even though they have not maintained it has not reduced our taxes rather our taxes are still increasing and uh, even though there's many houses that have been built and, and purchased on Louisiana Terrace um, we realize the county pools are tax dollars but we feel what the county gets in tax dollars on our road alone should more than enough keep the road of Louisiana Terrace open. And just the real estate, not the taxes, what they're charging, but the real estate alone, just for the six houses, not counting the land that Mr. Cobb owns or uh, uh, Crumbacks own, 
we're looking at uh, just what the county had appraised the houses, the six houses for, is 2,183,470. So we feel we have the tax dollars to finish the road and leave it open because I can't find keys sometime if there's a medical emergency. So just a thought. All right, ma'am. morning. Uh, my name is Jessica Bailey and my husband and I, Steve, own 4213 Louisiana Terrace and I'm going to share some personal things with you and I will try and keep my emotions under control. Um, um, and, it, and they're very personal to me so I appreciate your time. Um, let me ask a question you don't have to answer out loud, please don't, but have you ever woken up on Christmas to realize that your car has been stolen? Have you ever gotten a call from your children that they have had your home when you're at work over an hour away, that they have um, had the door knocked on and see someone on your property, and then they see another vehicle of yours stolen? If you've not had those experiences, then you cannot understand the emotion and the trauma and the um, feelings that myself and my family have as a result of people that are out to do no good. A home is a place that is supposed to be safe and secure and to feel comfort and peace. When those instances happened in my family, um, we made the decision to take some financial hits and, and move. Um, and these things didn't happen, obviously, um, in the city. They were in Franklin County when they happened to our family. And we made a decision to move. And I was very, very happy when we found a house that appeared to be at the end of what seems like a dead end road and the peace and the comfort that it would bring me and my family. Um, when, um, as we've lived there almost five years, we've had, um, I've learned that there are three different types of people that come down that road, that pass all the houses and end up at ours. The first group of people are friends family, people that know where they are and they're coming to see us. The second type of people that come down that road are people that are lost, that don't know where they are, um, and they typically turn around and go the other direction. The third type of people that come down that road are people that are up to no good. They don't have any business being there, whether they're crazy teenagers doing teenage things or people that really are not out for good. Um, as my husband's described recently, we've had a little bit more than our fair share of the number three type of people that show up at our house. Um, it has caused um, me a significant amount of emotional trauma and stress, knowing that there are people that are close to my home based on the circumstances that have happened in my past. I know that it may be an inconvenience to my neighbors and that they are concerned, but I would like to think that as neighbors, if something horrible happened to the South, that we would band together as neighbors to get through it rather than fight over a ditch or what might happen out of the compassion of being in Franklin County and living in the country. Um, I think that a lot of the problems from people turning around and drives could be a solution by having a dead end sign at the end of the road so that people know before they come that that's what they're going to experience. Um, I really, like my husband, appreciate the serious consideration um, that's being put forth. We have no intention of moving. We love living on our property and we love the location. Um, we want to live there until we die um, and have every intention of doing that. And so I appreciate the time. I appreciate the eff efforts that have gone forward. And I really hope that everybody seriously considers the um, positive impact that, that being able to make it option two so that everybody's solutions are, are met. And I thank you. If there are any questions, please. Any questions? Thank you. With, with the understanding that there are no second chances here, is there anybody else who would like to come up and speak on this? 
Hearing nothing else, I would recommend. Yeah, I recommend we, a motion to uh, close the public hearing. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, at this point, can we have Jeff come up yeah. and uh, give us um, some insight on what the county has? Appreciate your time on this. Oh, wow. Sir? Okay. First of all, I'd like to say uh, Mr. Lee picked a heck of a day to be sick. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, I, I do think that there are, I, I listened to what everybody had to say, there are definitely everything that was touched on is, is correct. This road has not been maintained for at least 10 years. Uh, this was a minimum maintenance road with a very narrow easement. And it was, it was basically houses were put on it with no improvement to any drainage or any structure at all. It's kind of difficult to tell the difference between the north end and the south end, other than the south end has better drainage and it has gravel on it but they're, it's just all a, basically a minimum maintenance road. Um, we've had lots of discussions in the past with people who have lived out there. Some folks didn't want any improvement, that they liked that tunnel, and others that wanted it done. So therefore, it's one of the reasons it's not been touched. Uh, and Jeff, my, these are pictures of what it looks like as of yesterday? Today. Oh, today. Yeah, I took those pictures yesterday morning. Compared to the, okay. what we had from last Correct. Time. So everybody knows what we're but looking But there is still a, a, a substantial drainage issue on that end. It would take a lot of work in order to make it a passable minimum maintenance road. Uh, I Two points that I want to make. One is the right of way does not give me room to do what I would need to do to bring it up. So somebody would have to provide us access. There is enough material on site that we could improve that road drastic greatly the, the very north end of it would take a lot of work in order to get that up enough that it isn't a problem for people pulling out on Shawnee Road which is an FAS route which carries a lot of traffic and and a lot of speed so um, that that is an option we do have other com uh, areas in the community that are gated um, I'm per professionally and personally not a fan of the gates the the kids will still drive around them. They still tear them up. They still, uh, when we have to maintain inside that area, uh, I've always had a difficulty understanding how we are taking care of one or two people instead of the county as a whole to try to do that. Uh, but I do understand that in certain situations that is the best option. So uh, I know there's not a lot of, uh, there's not a lot of planning that goes on. We don't have to, worry too much about going in to get farmers in and out of this area it's mostly grassland but i do know that a lot of times when you give keys to folks it doesn't just stick with the people you give them to they like to have their hunters and their family members and therefore it's just not the, the typical individuals doing it so jeff so, would you rather see a full vacation well what i think my recommendation at this time would be to if the, if the board was willing to allow me to do it, let me get in there and do some improvements to this roadway to try to get it up to where it doesn't feel like it's a place where kids play. I took it upon myself the other day to go out to the quarry and they've got a bunch of borrowed rock that they've mixed in when they did the pipeline. And I can get that at a very reduced rate, uh, less than half of what uh, we could use elsewhere. It's not good enough, it's brown rock. It's not good enough I can put it on my gravel roads, but I could put it on a minimum maintenance road to fix some of those issues. Having said that, that's not gonna repair some of the drainage issues that you have because that is cut out. But if we could remove some of the foliage along the roads and pull some of that material back so we don't have it so low and so bold, it will always be a minimum maintenance road. But we could have it to a point where it it didn't look like a playground for kids. Um, that's, that's an option. Uh, if you do do the Gates things, I'm, I, I, I'm not really necessarily interested in every time that they need something done out there that I gotta drop everything like I do at other locations and go in there and try to take care of an individual when I need to be looking and taking care of the community as a whole. 
I appreciate how cognizant you are of that. that well, it's, I'm the guy that they call. to take care of the community, not individuals. Absolutely, and I'm that guy that they call, and we do this a lot in so other locations, and it's, it's difficult to, to, to have the time to do what we need. But having said that, under the circumstances, I think that's a tough decision that you need. If you tell me that we need to put gates up and we need to maintain inside those, we will find the time uh, again to do it. I, I don't think in this situation, I, I've spoken to several people in the past on that road that have desired it to go out. This goes way back to when Jim Hegg was here and uh, one individual on that road didn't want people going down it, so they closed it themselves and nothing was done about it. And so that's how that we got here. But that's been years and years ago. We have spent literally nothing on this road since whoever rocked it. We rocked it just a little bit. But uh, again, those are the, in my opinion, a county road is for county access. You either give it back to the property owners and they do with it what they want and we don't have to worry about it, or you let everybody utilize it as a county roadway. That's my opinion as a road superintendent. But again, I think under these circumstances, those are tough decisions that you need to make. The, the question I would have is the individuals who are not, who, who are there for nefarious purposes that you can't do anything about because gates you know, you don't that stop. gate, no, but if, the, but, but if there are gates and it says, well, the problem no, we've had with that, I, it, the problem we've had with that is even when folks have accessed us, if we, we can't prove that they broke the gates down and they get inside a gate, that's still a public road right away. I, 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 it's hard for a sheriff to arrest somebody on a public road if they're in it, even if it's gated, because it's a public road. That's what I was trying to. to you can't, there, there's no, there's nothing against the law to being on a public road. They just got around the gate. Is that correct, Jeff? Even if there was a gate with signage, you still couldn't, even, even if they were at the property? The, so the only way to do that would be to vacate it, and then if the individual owners put up the gate, then then you could do that. That's correct. Oh, jeez. The, the the gates that we have in the community right now, you have four of them, and I repair them twice a year. There's no houses around them, but there's and the kids still go out there and play, but. It's, it, it didn't solve the problem necessarily there either, other than the fact that we vacated that road, we own that gate, and the county has to go back and fix it. And, and they'll, they'll, you know, they'll try to find their way in. Using that material left over from the pipeline. And when somebody mentioned pipeline going across there, that is the one time where we do get a lot of mm -hmm. free or... Yeah, it's, it's not free, but it's, it wouldn't cost... Material it. that uh, when they repair those. Right. But, um, but in order to do it properly, I would need more right away to I'm in favor myself of trying to make some improvements to it to make it look less accessible for a for somebody to go play on or to do something and then can continue to have public access it's still going to be a minimum rates for they're still going to be able to get down and do things that they wanted to have, have said, said that you can detour some of that by just making it look like something more than just a dead end road so you can open it up enough to where somebody well, just to, mowing to, be, looks, to do to do just mowing nefarious things, you kind of need a sense of privacy, a sense of that you're Correct. not going to be drove up on. Correct. You could make that uh, north uh, portion right. of the road and, at least open and, enough somebody might come down. And, yeah, there there is a, a, a real drainage issue at um, I think it's Bailey's driveway, and it's been that way forever. And that's part, and I could do some improvements there to try to make some of that uh, more accessible. You think you could way. would uh, add that material? Likely get enough mud off of it where it's not a fun four-wheel drive. There's not that to temporarily, and we could blade it up when they do it occasionally. I mean, it was not something that's going to be consistent, but we can. Sure. It, it, it help our blade operator to. I, right now, I can only go down it with end dumps, and I have no place to turn around, so he yeah. backs in. Yeah. So um, we that that's an option, but none of this is going to be real easy. Sure. None of it's real simple. Any questions for me? Jeff, yeah, I'm going to take the make a turnaround at the end of the end of the property owners. More right of way access 
I, but that's a, that's an option. But it would take. There's some structures right there that are not too far from the roadway, and it would probably. Uh, it would either have to go farther north to be a turnaround, which gets you back in that hollow where we'd have to dig it out, or it would have to be, the turnaround would have to be right at their driveway in order to do it. But I, you'd have to have the ability to, I don't know how many property owners are there. Um, as far as tonnage of rock, we could, you know, 500, 600 tons, probably do some pretty good things in those low areas if we need to, and just get that road built back up. You're but it's still, that, it's still gonna be- more right away. Well, the fences are right up on the roadway, and you were in a concave bowl out there. And these are the people that have the property, and are you going to grant more right away? Again, that would be something that would be an option. Um, and again, gates are an option. We just haven't had a lot of success in the past with them. We've had the same issues. Uh, it doesn't deter a whole lot. Uh, if they think they can still get down there, they're going to... Uh, we can we can pull fences all the way to the edge, but they, they a lot of times will cut fences or they'll a chain and a, we, they cut locks. They do all kinds of. It things. also gives them some kind of assurance that nobody's going to drive in there. Then there is private. If they can get is, access to yeah, it, if they're it going does. down there to do something, they shouldn't. Yeah, they can. So just just some things to think of. Anything else? Appreciate it. You have any comments? On it? No, I mean, I think start, they... Yeah, we're just going to start with... Yeah. Um, what you got? Anybody? I don't think anybody's in favor of vacation, vacating it completely from what I've heard. Well, I would like to hear that. Yeah, Are but... Are any I, of you in favor of vacating it? It's hard to do with the utilities in there. Yeah, if there weren't utilities, I would say, yeah. The, the the pipeline that goes through there, it's on the maintained part of the road, not on the low maintenance part of the road. Part, south. South of us. Okay. So. Can I get back up there? No. Nope. Oh, we've had public comment. No. Nope. Well, no. Nope. Um, so we're going to take that option off the table then. Okay. Completely vacated. Is that right? Is that what you all feel? I mean, what I would say, Ian, is that if if Jeff wants the ability, Jeff and his team, to get in there and try to make some improvements um, and see what that does, that doesn't take gating it at a later date off the table. Um, I mean, Jeff is clearly against the gating, and, and if it hasn't proved to be a deterrent, and he would know, given the frequency with which he's had to repair the gates, I would give his opinion on that a fair amount of weight. But if he wants to see if making some improvements helps the situation, we could always come back later and discuss the gating. Or if you all feel, given the, the issues that the Baileys have had in particular, that it gates a solution, a better solution now, then certainly, you know, you have that, that ability. You summed it up wonderfully. Does that, does that take a table or just let it, get, let it take uh, its course? Well, I think um, you wouldn't necessarily have to table it. You just wouldn't make a motion today to vacate or to install a gate, but we would leave here giving Jeff the direction to utilize county staff to try and improve the road to a degree that it's not as attractive to nefarious folks. And then... You know, I would presume that the Baileys will stay in touch with, have you been working primarily through David? Is that, or? I've been like, I'm going to take that from, his house is right next to the road that's my car drive. I will say, uh, I understand that the county guy is the head of the maintenance department saying there's a lot of maintenance. I live right at the corner.
just given the natural topography of the lake. <coughs> I think these things need to be dealt with on a case by case basis. You know, I I don't have the expertise to to you know, I can't you know, Jeff's experience with Gates is Jeff's experience with Gates and Even if we put gates on it, though, just to be able to keep being put like utility vehicles, if it's impassable for months and you need an electric vehicle in there in those months, it still needs to be a little bit more than we do now or, or not. I like the idea of giving uh, Jeff some authority to go in there and do some work and see how that works. If, um, you know, there's the problem persists or we want to come back to this, we can always add a gate. There's a lot of procedure and uh, a process to vacating a road, but to adding a gate, we don't have to go through this long process. It's not the ordeal. You don't have to petition us to do it. That's just something we can, as a matter of business, uh, bring back up at a normal time so it's it's not an act of congress if we want to you know continue to address the problem i don't think there's any uh problem with kind of taking incremental steps forward and seeing how that works i'm happy to take responsibility for the south and i'm sure alan's happy to take responsibility for the north the improvement for drainage and still Cameron is in front of my residence. Not an access to the field that's not remote. What would you like? Damage or maintenance or locks gun, I'm happy to take care of you. It doesn't have to be one or the other. We're not doing the vacate. I want people Versus to rest, stay off my property. Off. Not so we have to ask you. Please. All right, stop. All right, all right, all right. Please stop. Please. I am not. I'm not sure. I want to take the gates off the table at this point. But if the rest of you do, then we can. We'll. So I need to hear what you all need. Would like to do. Do you want to just try to maintain it without gates at this point, or do you want to try the gates? I mean, in the long run, Jeff, it would help to get some rock in there anyway, wouldn't it? So we could just stair step into this deal. And... Right. So I, my understanding is Colt would be in favor of before applying the gate, letting Welton get in and do some work. If I'm hearing you correctly, Rod, that's where you're at. Um, Roy, Ian is in a different spot. So Roy, Don, one of you, what are your thoughts? We're uh, giving the county a chance to do something with the road. But we can always revisit it. And in all the years I've been here, every vacation of road has a whole, you think it all had the same substance and the same reason, and, but it isn't. Every one of them has a whole different atmosphere of, of uh, why they want it or why they don't want it. So if uh, he thinks that uh, he can make some improvements and help it, I could live with that. But we're always open that if it doesn't do any good, to revisit it. Okay, so the thought process is that if we make the road look different, it may deter folks, it sounds like, that want to go down and do four-wheeling. 
I don't know if that deters folks who are trespassing on property. So what I would ask is that you have your camera set up. I'd like to talk. I'd like to talk. Um, is that you let the sheriff know immediately if you if this is the route we're going to go when I have three commissioners saying that that's how they feel then I would ask that you let the sheriff know if you continue to see folks on your property, we are going to get in and make it look different, it sounds like. Um, and if we get reports from the sheriff's office that you're still having concerns, as Commissioner Waymeyer said, we don't need to notice up a public hearing to apply a gate because we're not vacating a road. So that's a process that can happen quicker. Uh, we could get on an agenda and discuss that again. Does that sound palatable to, I, I've got three of you, Roy, you're shaking your head. Okay. 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 So I think that's where we'll leave this today, unless any of the five of you have any other. So there's no action to be taken. No action to be right, taken so today. So we'll move on to... Um, I have got one um, unrelated thing before we get to staff reports, Ian. Yes. Um, could you could you guys stay for a minute? Or I mean, I'll, I would like to give you my information. So at the end of the meeting. Okay. 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 Um, so and Jeff is here. He can talk about this further if necessary. Um, we have some asphalt patching that needs to be done. Um, uh, looks like uh, on bridge approaches on John Brown Road and Cloud Road. Um, the amount of that it looks like is just under 20,000 given the, and that's a bid from Kilo, given the importance of those approaches, we would all like to proceed. Um, Jeff learned this morning also at 59 and Rock Creek, there's some rutting. We would like permission to have Kilo just, we don't have the means to be able to do it properly. So we would like permission for Kilo to do that as well, which may bump that cost up a little bit, but it's looking at around $20,000. Absolutely no budget concerns. Kilo's done amazing work for us before. And given that we're talking about bridge approaches, I, I would like to ask that we do that ASAP. And I think David said he was gonna there was an issue and he was going to get a bid, so yeah. Well, then the asphalt, correct me if I'm wrong, that's uh, provided at state prices, the uh, material we purchased, isn't it? Yes, it is. This is was a no, it's bit, not. Oh, this sorry. was just a little bit different this time, and I think it's probably because of the timing. It's late in the year, getting ready to close the, the, the plant. We typically get it for about 150 a ton. That should have figured out to somewhere around 12, 13,000, but under the circumstances, this late in the year, what we are looking to do. We hope we solve the issue that we had on the on the abutments. And uh, this will be a permanent fix. So uh, they can just do a lot better, smooth approach to both. But the sides. price per ton is the KDOT price, isn't it? That well, usually purchase that. This, or was, just a a this was a specific, what's it going to take? I met with Ken Massingill out there yesterday, and they sent it out. When you figure it up ton per price, it's more than we gave previously, but I think part of that is because it's a very small project. they got to get their equipment to two locations, and so it didn't come out to what I thought it would be. It's about $5,000. So a little more for mobilization. But and because it's November and the plants could close any time. Probably paying a premium for that. Right. I guess still it's not a an open check. It's based on right. established prices. Is Correct. Right. So do yeah, I, I, would, I would just ask if you're interested that you make a motion to approve um, Kilo um, to perform asphalt work at, on John Brown and Cloud Road at those two particular bridge approaches as well as Rock Creek and 59. As directed and supervised by Jeff I can't make a motion to because I know David this thing something that just cropped up. No, it's yeah. not. He brought it up several weeks ago and we're about ready to move into the weather we ain't gonna be able to do. That's it. right. It's and it's just gonna keep getting more. So I make a motion we move forward. Second. All right. I'd like to say there's a couple others that should be looked at and that's uh fifty nine uh bridge over to the Railroad tracks going north out of 59. Both approaches are. I can fix that.
Great. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Commissioner Waymeyer? Yes. Commissioner Stoudemire? Yes. Chair Dickinson? Yes. You might go talk to Joanna and make sure we get those notices out. I uh, really appreciate the five of you allowing us to do that. I know David will as well. Anytime we've had Kilo get in and, and perform this kind of work, we've gotten a lot of positive feedback. We're, we're able to keep things afloat with our equipment, but they can get in and do it the right way. And it's so thank you all for that. Uh, in terms of a staff report, I don't have much today. I, we're canvassing, is that right, Janet? Yeah. And then we've got a, a meeting at lunch today with the leadership team. So look forward to that. Um, that's all I have. Thanks. Bailey's, instead of waiting, would you just leave your information with Janet and then you won't have to stick around? Yeah, that would be great. All right. Pat, do you have anything today? No, all right, Sheriff. All right. All right, well, maybe this is going to go faster than I thought. Janet. Uh, so we are canvassing immediately after this. So if you can um, make quick work of getting down to the courthouse, um, I think we've got everything set up down there already in the courtroom on the second floor. Um, we only have 44 provisionals to review. And of course, as always, we'll have the recommendations ready for you. So hopefully it won't take too long to get through that. Um, we'll do a short recess like we've done in the past. We'll run the ballots through and then we'll um, come back with final results. So okay. we, do have a, we do have some races that are um, right in only, so we'll review those also, and um, a couple of close races. All right. All right, we'll move on to commissioner comments. Nothing from Bob. Nothing. 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 I went to an ACAN meeting last night, and uh, we got a, a presentation from uh, Cindy Miles, Kansas Alliance for Nonprofits, on uh, how, to, how to raise money for. Uh, Nonprofits, basically. Mm -hmm. That was it. All right. Um, all right. I went to the uh, grand opening at the Tractor Supply Company. Um, they're fully stocked, so if you haven't been in there for a while, you need to go in and see what they've got. Um, they're not using all of the footprint of the Orschland store, but it's one of the biggest tractor supply stores in the nation. So. Um, a lot of the people that worked there before are continuing, have moved to the new company, so a lot of um, knowledge in there. Chamber of Commerce board meeting yesterday morning, um, looking at new budget for next year, possibly getting another, uh, at least a part-time person in there. Uh, United Way board meeting last night, some changes going on there. And then the city of Ottawa is looking at a, and this is kind of exciting, at the corner of Davis and Wilson, um, that corner that's been zoned C1, they're going to change it, and they're going to put, uh, a developer wants to put in 40, um, 55 and over uh, residences in there, so that's exciting, because yeah. um, you get at all on one level, a thousand square foot, and when you get a place for 40 seniors to go into, that opens up um, properties for um, so hopefully that will help, I mean, it never will completely alleviate the problem, but it's a, it's a nice start for that corner. Um, otherwise, yes, we do have a couple more things going on today, so, so if there's second. nothing else, all right, we're moving on.